Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. I welcome each and every one of you in the presence of God. And there is a mighty, mighty word that is prepared for you Amen. by God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was really enjoying when I was preparing this word and I was really telling to myself this word for my life and I am here to impart that anointing over you and your family in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are going to today meditate upon 1 Samuel chapter 30. We are going to meditate the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30 today. Amen. I'm going to read from KJV and I'm going to start reading from verse 1 onwards. You can keep your book of 1 Samuel 30 open. Hallelujah. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. Amen. And verse 2 says, And had taken the women captives that were therein, they slew not any. Can somebody say they slew not any? Amen. Hallelujah. Either great or small, they slew not any, but carried them away and went on their way. Verse 3 says, So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burning with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters all were taken captives. And then in verse 4, David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Is there anyone in the house of God today like me that they had no more power to weep? Amen. Hallelujah. And verse 5 says, And David's two wives were taken captives, namely Hahinom the Zezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And verse 6 says, David greatly distressed. David was greatly distressed. If you are distressed in the house of God, there is food for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Why he was distressed? For the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David did what? He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Can somebody say David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And verse 7 says, David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me either the ephod. And Abiathar brought either the ephod to David. Amen. And David, what he did after getting the ephod, he said, David inquired of the Lord. Is there anybody today to inquire of the Lord in this house? Because I am here to inquire of the Lord today. Amen. Saying, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail you and me are going to recover it all today in the name of Jesus. The topic today that I'm going to share with you and me today is pursue, overtake and recover it all for his glory. Pursue, overtake and recover it all in the name of Jesus. Father God, we want to thank you for this wonderful mighty word, Lord. Your word is truth. Your word is power. Your word is reality, Master. And Lord, we want to say thank you for this wonderful word that you have called us to today. Pursue to overtake and to Lord, recover it all because you are promising that you are going to restore everything that we have lost master not only the things we have lost we will also bring some extras extra anointing extra blessings extra things when we go out on the war master that is what we are going to learn from you today holy spirit holy and mercy spirit of god Thank you for Lord giving this wonderful, powerful word. 
Lord, as your people are going to hear the word, Master, which you have given me. Lord, as I giving this word of yours to them today, they will all go filled with your blessings, uh, filled with your joy, filled with your people. Lord, filled with your anointing. Uh, Lord, they will take, uh, recover everything, uh, whatever they have lost. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for ministering to us today. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, Lord, we ask and pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So the word for you and me today is to pursue, overtake, and recover it all. Amen. Chase them, catch them, and recover it all. In the morning, we heard a word that we have to wait. Amen. Now the waiting period is getting over. And when you are inquiring of the Lord, God is telling you, go, take, overtake, and recover it all. Amen. Hallelujah. That is what we are going to learn. Recover means what? Recover means return to its normal state of health, normal state of mind, normal state of strength, the way God wants it to be. That is called recovery. Amen. So we, are, we see in our scripture reading today that David found themselves in some kind of a crisis. David and his men returned home and found out that their camp is completely raided and burnt and all their wives and children and their property had been taken captive by the enemy. Amen. And when the men returned, they saw the camp was smoking and burning completely. So maybe you and me like David and his men today, we too are walking according to the will of God, according to the purpose and plan of God. God ordained the plan, but suddenly when you come back to check uh, and you see that the enemy has stolen all the things and taken captive. Uh, amen. All things have been looted. Your family has been looted. Your finances have been looted. Your job has been looted. When you are walking in the will of God, because David went for this earlier battle according to the will of God. Amen. That's why I'm saying when you and me are very much in the will of God, suddenly when we check uh, our stuff, uh, it is all lost. Uh, it is all looted. Amen. You may not be undergoing as these people are undergoing in 1 Samuel chapter 30, but something or the other which rightfully and lawfully belongs to you and me have been looted by the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. It is, for example, I went to buy a house of, suppose, say, one million dirham. And then suddenly what happened? The rules and regulations changes and the same house becomes five million dirhams. Then what happens? The clause which I signed for one million dirhams says that I cannot now break this agreement. I have to buy this, whatever may happen. Then what happens? Which means the enemy has come in and looted your finances in that place. That is what. And then what happens? The fear grips your heart because you don't know from where this 5 million dirhams is going to come because you planned only for 1 million dirham. Amen. So suddenly your finances are ripped off. Your peace is ripped off. And fear takes charge in that place. It so happens suddenly you lose your job. Many of you have lost, uh, lost your job recently in our own church. Uh, amen. It suddenly the enemy came in and destroyed it. Uh, suddenly your health is destroyed. Suddenly last night only Elijah and Beverly was having uh, some fire next to their building. Amen. Suddenly something like that happened but protection of God was upon them. The wisdom of God was upon them that everything is restored for them today. Amen. So suddenly something goes wrong. Amen. Some of us may be struggling with some relationship issues today. Amen. Some of us are facing some faith issues today. We are, we are losing on our faith because of our law, all the circumstances which are coming and attacking us every now and then. Our faith is lost and we have started doubting God. Amen. That could be the situation for some of us today. So therefore, something or the other happens and our stuff are now in the camp of the enemy. Amen. Verse 4 of our scripture reading says, they wept until they couldn't weep anymore. 
Amen. God says uh, you and me have been crying about our lost stuff, uh, about the people, about the family, about the situation and many other things uh, that the enemy has stolen from us uh, even when they are rightfully belonging to us, even when we are rightfully walking according to the will and purpose and plan of God, all has been ripped off and taken by the enemy to its camp. Amen. Something like this happening. No more tears to shed. If you are in that place, this message is for you. Amen. If you have no more tears to shed, then this message is for you. I am talking to the one who have no more tears to shed. Amen. But know for sure that that is the place God is going to use you mightily. Amen. That is what we see in 1 Samuel chapter 30. If you are sick of crying today, then we should learn from David this evening and we should go after, we should catch them and we should recover it all. Amen. So when they get back to the camp in Ziklag, they saw their camp was burned and their property was gone. The children was gone. Parents gone. Wife gone. Everything enemy has taken captive. But the grace of the matter is in verse 2, which says, enemy did not kill anyone. Amen. That's what we read in KJV, slew not anyone. The enemy did not kill anyone, either great or small, but they just carried to their camp, captive to their camp. Amen. We are all, I mean, we all know the scriptures. Enemy comes to do what? To kill, steal and destroy. That is the job description of the enemy. And when the enemy come, it comes only like a roaring lion. Actually, it is not a roaring lion. We all know the scriptures. Amen. So this is the special text message to you and me this evening. So know for sure that everything you and me have lost is not destroyed. It's not destroyed. Enemy came to destroy and it has all the rights to destroy it because that is his job description. But God said... I did not allow the enemy to destroy because I covered it. I just put a blind like he cannot destroy it. He might have taken captive, but it is not destroyed. Amen. But God came to tell you, I will, net, I will never let the enemy to destroy any of your stuff. Hallelujah. Because we sometimes think it's all gone. It's all gone. But God is telling you and me today, it's not all gone. It's just gone to the other side. You pursue, you overtake, and you recover it all today. Amen? Because God has blocked it already for you and me. Amen? And God is saying today, my grace is more than sufficient for you and me that you can go and recover it all. Amen? Hallelujah? So you go after, you pursue, and you chase, and you overtake. And you recover it all. And you get everything back. But what you have to do, first thing, you and me are going to first get encouraged in the Lord our God as David did. Amen. Before going and bringing everything back from the enemy's camp, he encouraged himself in the Lord is God. Amen. Verse 6 says he encouraged himself in his God. He encouraged himself not by any motivational speaker, or not by any pastor or any preacher standing here and preaching. He encouraged himself in his God. Amen. It's okay to listen to motivational speaker. And also it's okay to listen the preachers preaching. But the encouraging job is mine and is yours. We can only stand and preach and minister. But getting encouraged is in our own hands. Amen. That is what David is doing here. Amen. To encourage all. I mean, we got to get ourselves encouraged. Amen. How you and me are going to get encouraged when all is looted from you. Today, all is looted from you. What are you going to do? Come on, say, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Amen. When all is looted, we are supposed to say, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Blessed be the Lord, Holy One of Israel. Amen. This is how you, you encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. We always uh, say that, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. 
Bless his holy name. This is how you encourage yourself in the Lord. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. This is how you encourage yourself in the Lord. And you can say, my soul waited for the Lord, our God, more than that day waited for the morning. Amen. Like a psalmist, he always sings psalms like this, whenever everything is looted from him. Amen. So today, encourage yourself in the Lord your God. Amen. When we say you are encouraging, when we say all these things, which means you are encouraging yourself in the Lord. Amen. That is why we need to come to church before the praise and worship starts. The moment praise and worship starts, what happens? You are encouraging. Whatever may be the situation, you are entering the house of God. The moment praise and worship starts, you start to encourage yourself by lifting up your hands, by opening your mouth and singing songs unto the Lord. This is what you do. This is the reason that we should be in the house of God before the praise and worship starts. Amen. Hallelujah. When you started to praise him and worshipping and lifting up your voice unto him, when you do all that, the spirit of the living God will do something in your life. Spirit of the living God will do something in your soulish mind. Spirit of the living God will do something in your heart. And Spirit of the living God will change your thought process when you encourage yourself in the Lord your God. Amen. Hallelujah. Then we speak out loudly and talk to God. Amen. And another method to encourage yourself in the Lord your God is to read his promises aloud. Read the word of God aloud. Amen. I'm staying alone so I have all the privileges to read loudly. Amen. So you have to read it loud. You can take some of the promises which God told me to give you today in Isaiah 41.10. Fear not for I am with you. Amen. Take it for you today. Fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed because I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. This is a promise uh, which you can say and encourage when all is looted, when your job is gone, family is gone, everything is taken captive to the enemy's uh, side, a camp. Uh, you can say that he is my God. He will help me. He will strengthen me. Amen. God has told me that you can cast your burdens unto him. Psalms 55, 22 says, give your worries to the Lord. If you have any worry, give it now, right now. In his presence, uh, give your worries to the Lord because he says he will care for you. Amen. He will never let those who are good be defeated. In Genesis itself, God, when he created you and me, he said you are good. Amen. So what is he saying? You and me will never be defeated. Amen. Our God will neither leave us nor forsake us. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, be strong and courageous. If any one of us are weak today, let us take this word, be strong and courageous. Be not afraid or terrified because of all those situations and circumstances that is happening today. For the Lord your God will go with you. He will never leave you, neither forsake you. Amen. Hallelujah. So in verse 6, uh, we see that David encouraged himself in the Lord as God. We can also see the reason why David encouraged himself in the Lord is because everybody who was with him stood against him. In verse 6, the verse says, the soul of all the people was grieved. 1 Samuel 30 verse 6 says, the soul of all the people was grieved. So they were grieved and stood against David as if everything was good with David, as if David was not stressed out, as if David's family has not been taken captive, David too has lost man, amen. David too lost everything. But David could encourage, he could encourage himself in the Lord as God just because of one reason. He was a worshiper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any worshiper in the house of the Lord today, he was a worshiper, amen. Worshippers, remember verse 6, will always be there in your life. 
if you are a worshipper amen another important thing to note in verse 6 is this verse does not say david was distressed uh, because he lost his stuff uh, because the enemy has taken captive all that belong to him he was stressed because people speak of stoning him amen i'm telling something in depth here just concentrate if you are a worshipper david was so confident to get back his stuff uh, whether everybody was standing with him or against him yes. worshipper knows always how to encourage in the lord their god yes. whether anybody is standing with them or against them if you and me are worshipers we should know how to encourage ourselves in the lord our god yes. amen hallelujah then what david does after getting encouraged himself in the lord is god is not keeping quiet david got into prayer position amen you don't just get encourage yourself and go into the presence of god and do nothing verse 7 and 8 says then he got the ephod and he said to the priest that i got to talk to my god today that's why i'm asking you if you have come to talk to your god about your lost stuff talk to him now in his presence he is here to listen to you she came here in the beshuka he saying i got to talk to my god because i need some instructions right now amen david is saying i'm already encouraged but now i want to enquire of the lord hallelujah ephod is used in ancient israel that is not our topic i'll just tell you is ephod is a garment used in ancient israel it is like a sleeveless garment worn by the jewish priests and this garment is worn to go into the presence of the lord to know what is the will of god for you if that person wearing ephod and going if i'm wrong you can correct me after this message you know go to the presence of god to know the will of the lord for that situation amen david strongly believes being a worshipper that if god says something he will definitely do it amen david says now i want to enquire of the lord inquire what he want to enquire where is his sons where are his daughters he want to enquire about his family he want to enquire about his lost stuff amen in other words david says it's not time for me to lose anything because i am a worshipper i am a champion i am an overcomer i am a conqueror that is what david is thinking here i am not going to bother who turned against me because it is time for me to inquire of the lord then in verse 8 he inquires of the lord and asking the lord shall i pursue this troop pursue means to go behind to run after to chase in essence it means david is saying i want to go to the battle amen so david says i just need to know should i go or not if i go after the enemy will i overtake will i bring back my stuff or not that is what he want to inquire from the lord so that is why i said if you want to inquire of the lord today in his presence uh, you can ask him your last stuff lord where is my last stuff uh, lord tell me should i pursue should i overtake uh, lord you will give it to me lord tell me amen like he said to david he is telling to many of us today i am telling you padma you go you overtake you will recover it all god is in other words telling i will restore everything all to you that is what he is telling in this verse so whenever devil messes with you and me and you can say i am coming after you devil i am pursuing after you i am coming to overtake i am coming to recover everything that you have stolen from me amen god said you shall pursue you shall catch them you shall overtake you shall recover it all amen hallelujah remember that at least one enemy we fight every day if not many at least definitely one enemy we fight every day from today onwards we will tell that enemy i'm coming after you i'm coming to chase after you amen hallelujah so you can pursue and you can recover it all and you can overtake whatever the enemy has ripped off whatever the enemy has taken captive in august 27 lord we are going to overtake we are going to recover it all in the name of jesus 
she came here in the bed maybe you have lost just now in august but you will recover it all in august itself in the name of jesus amen don't bother about economic downturn let us not bother about recession let us let us not bother about downsizing or redundancy let us just but everything that has been ripped off we will pursue like david we will overtake we will recover it all amen god is going to get some glory out of your life and my life this month hallelujah you may ask how will i prosper in this season let's see what happens next in the scripture 1 samuel 30 verse 9 David and 600 men with him came to the Bezor valley where some stayed behind David left with 600 men and they were going after the troop to do what to take back what was stolen amen so today let us ride with David and go to the enemy's camp and take back what he has stolen from us sir amen so let us take back our children let us take back our families let us take back our health Let us take back our joy. Let us take back our peace. Let us take back our prosperity. Let us take back our finances. Let us take back our jobs. Let us take back our businesses. Let us take back. She cover alanda bashura ra mando ro roko. Later, the text says in verse nine, they came to an alt at Bisor Valley. Let's now see what happens at Bisor Valley in verse ten. One Samuel thirty verse ten says. 200 of them were too exhausted to cross the valley but david and the other 400 men continued the pursuit 200 men out of 600 men said they could not go any further they told david we are too tired man we are too distressed we are too worn out to cross this river david looked at them and said we too are tired man we too are stressed out i am also distressed Amen but God said David you chase after the enemy God said you go after them God said you pursue God said you overtake God said that you will recover it all and I am in the mandate of God I have got an assignment to do so I have no time to say I am tired I am worn out I am distressed she kebere lende be so we are walking well within god's time and we are going to go to the other side in the enemy's camp because we have god's assignment we got to go man if you are not coming amen so on our pursuing there may be some who are tired there may be some who are stressed out there may be some who are worn out like this there may be some telling you that i am so exhausted i cannot go with you but you do not give up you do not give up because you have a mandate from god to chase after god has already told you that you will recover it all you just concentrate on that one word of god and you chase after amen we got to pump those people who are tired and who are weak and who are stressed out and tell them come on let us go because god has already promised us that he will give it us all amen hallelujah i too you can always say that i am also hurt i am also lost everything but i am going to go amen so then automatically those people will come with you don't miss your season just because some people are tired don't miss your season just because some people are not joining you amen bible as such says you will reap if you faint not amen hallelujah we are so close to recover it all let us not be faint because we are going to reap it now he wanted 600 men nevertheless 400 followed with him amen but if god told you to go with one also let's go amen hallelujah if all the four, 200 men doesn't want to come lead them you go amen this is the season for you and me to have some unusual faith uh, to recover it all what you have lost uh, amen and now 400 are chasing but they are not discouraged 400 are chasing they are not distraught they are not down the verse says hard pressed on every side but they are not crushed 400 are chasing they are perplexed but not in despair they are persecuted but not abandoned they are struck down but they are not destroyed 
that's what we read in the verse also in 1 Samuel 30 that nothing is destroyed nothing is de it seems it is destroyed but it is not destroyed so they are crossing the river so we too will cross the river amen don't get tired recover it all move forward don't stop amen when I'm talking to you I'm telling to myself also don't stop Padma recover your son back recover your family back don't stop don't get disheartened hallelujah praise the Lord they are all on the way man as we are pursuing after the enemy we will recover everything all I'm going to go to the same place that David went today amen to recover my stuff to recover my wealth to recover my prosperity to recover my health I am going to go to the same place where David went amen hallelujah so it's time for you and me to recover it all amen hallelujah praise the Lord you know where the church messes up in this place now once you got a word about how you're going to go get blessed by God we get so focused on our restoration on our prosperity on our blessings that we miss people who we can bless on the way amen watch this now in verse 11 there was an Egyptian besides the street for three days wounded have nothing to eat nothing to drink for three days and here comes David and the 400 men riding on their way to getting their stuff God says it grieves me when I promise to give you something and you get so focused and you forget such people on your way you don't bless them as says the Bible says bless your neighbor Amen. There is a greatest commandment for us. Amen. There are some neighbors who are hungry. Amen. And sometimes we don't stop to bless them. But our scripture says David stopped and their men stopped and fed this Egyptian from their supply which they were carrying for the journey. They supplied out of that. God says your little bit is more than enough for somebody today hallelujah praise the Lord that is what is happening here they are on their journey they themselves don't know how long that uh, uh, drinks or water or whatever they are carrying is going to last long but out of that uh, they are giving this Egyptians I say it again our little bit is more than enough for someone passing by hallelujah next verse says verse 13 David asked him who do you belong to where do you come from he said, I am an Egyptian, the slave of an Amalekite. My master abandoned me when I became ill three days ago. You see, in verse 11 and 12, we saw David and his men first fed this Egyptian without knowing who he was. Amen. Then in verse 13, they find out who he was. Some of us are the other way around. We want to know who is this person, where is he coming from, which nationality, whether believer or not believer, oh, from which church, amen. So many things we want to know and then we think whether we can bless this person or not. I don't know about you, maybe I'm like that, amen. I want to know all the details and then I want to bless that person. But here, without knowing who he was, I mean, unknowingly, we bless the angel of God. A stranger, Bible says, uh, we bless the angel of God by unknowingly giving something to somebody. Amen? Then only after knowing that person, we decide whether we can extend help or not. This teaches me that without judging somebody, I should extend my help. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. David actually asked these questions to just for information purpose to know who he is. That's all. And in verse 14, we raided the Negev, this Egyptian saying who he is. We raided the Negev of the Keratites, some territory belonging to Judah and the Negev of Caleb, and we burned what? Ziklag. Ziklag is what? From where they started their uh, pursuing, amen? And after knowing this, what I will do? Uh -huh, you are that enemy who has taken captive Kalas. I mean, we just give that person out. We don't even do anything with, do with that person because he is the one who has taken captive all my stuff. Amen. But here, the Egyptian whom David and his men fed was with the troop who looted their children, looted their wives, looted all their stuff. Amen. Even if you and me see strangers like this, we will not help. 
So today let us learn a lesson from David when God is blessing you there may be somebody passing by whom we need to bless let us not just focus on the prosperity and restoration let us also focus on the wayside people who are coming on our way amen verse 15 says David asked him can you lead me down to this reading party amen see how God is making all these things we only know God said you go you chase you overtake it all. How? We don't know. If I was there, I would have asked God, how oh Lord, how do I do it? Amen? But here, we see God has already planned a way. God has already planned these Egyptians to come into this camp and God is uh, telling David to ask such questions and he is asking now the stranger, will you help us to reach there? And the Egyptian says, swear to me before God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master and I will take you down to them. Amen. He's taking a word from David. Those days, Christian's word meant much things. There was no lawyer required for this agreement. Amen. The word what the Christian speaks should have weight. Amen. Should have truth. Should have reality and should speak uh, I mean what you should do amen you should not speak uh, what you cannot do or what you don't want to do I mean I, I understand from here that this man is uh, telling that you please don't show myself to my master otherwise he will kill me amen and David says uh, he will adhere to that promise amen and Proverbs 16 7 says when the Lord takes pleasures in anyone's way he causes their enemies to make peace with them that is what is happening on the way this Egyptian with David and Egyptian amen it isn't very amazing for me I don't know about you what we learn here is God is saying in your pursuing in your about to overtake there are certain details that you are only going to get uh, from folk whom you help Amen. So I'm sure David must have felt very bad old journey. Another thing I wanted to see here is like sometimes David, David always keeps somebody in the camp whenever he goes for battle. But this Ziklag thing, he did not leave anybody behind. He just took all the people and went for the battle. That's why this uh, Ziklag was burnt and taken captive. Amen. I mean, we must always remember what we learned during our wilderness days. We must always remember the lessons that God teaches us in our lowly days. And those principles we should adopt when we are on the next battle. Amen. So here what is happening? The camp is not covered. Camp is not guarded. That's why I see that the Ziklag is completely taken captive. That's why the camp was looted. We all know nothing happens in our lives without God's knowledge. If you agree with me, say amen. But here we can say that God allowed the situation in Ziklag. Why? Because all stuff of these men were only taken captive but not destroyed, meaning not beyond recovery. Amen. We read in verse 2 that none of them were killed. Amen. It is never the intention of God that we become losers and defeaters. Hallelujah. So God is teaching some lessons to David here. What is applicable to you and me also today? God says, dear my son David, what I want you to understand here is what you learned in the wilderness, what you learned in your hard times, you use those principles you learned as I continue to prosper you. Some of us are in wilderness time now. Whatever lessons that you and me are learning this time, we should continue to apply those principles. Then God is saying, I will restore it all. Amen. Hallelujah. What I want to say is, if it is uncovered and unwatched, our camp is uncovered and unwatched, enemy can come anytime and take captive again. Not only take captive, it can also destroy. So it is for you and me to keep watch and cover our camp always, our families always. Jesus said, watch and pray. Amen. So through prayers, you have to always cover your camp. Amen. Paul also said, pray continually. Jesus showed in a, a, a parable of persistent widow where he said, do not give up. Pray always. Amen. So whenever you are in your battlefield, have someone who will stand in the gap for you. Amen. Psalmist says, when I'm afraid, I will trust in God. 
So if you're afraid, trust in God. I mean, these are all the things, by doing all these things, you are covering your camp. You are guarding, you are putting a cover on your camp so that the enemy does not come and destroy it. Amen. Hallelujah. We should keep our faith always on the higher level. Because Jesus said, it's because of your faith that you will be healed. In gospel book, in many miracles that Jesus did, uh, he always said, it's your faith that has healed you. Yes. Amen? So we should always keep our faith level I in Jesus. Uh, amen? So this is how you and me cover ourselves, uh, our, our uh, camp, uh, when we are on any battle. We all know, Bible says, do not give way to the devil. Amen? Then let us read verse 16, what it says. When Egyptians brought David and his 400 men, he led David down and there they were scattered over the countryside, eating, drinking, revealing because of the great amount of plunder they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from Judah. According to this verse, what I understand is enemy has got a big DJ. <laughs> Enemy has got some live bands here. Enemy is partying here because they are thinking that they have brought the spoils, all the spoils of Ziklag. They are thinking that all is ours now. Let us have the DJ and the live bands and let us party. Enemy does not know that you and me are here to kill Satan's party. Tonight you and me are here to kill Satan's party. The enemy thought that it has all your stuff. But they don't know the spirit of the Lord has already encouraged you and me today. And spirit of the Lord has already told you and me today to chase. Spirit of the Lord has already given the answer when we inquired of the Lord today. And spirit of the Lord has already said that you will overtake. You will recover it all. I will restore it all to you. Amen. The enemy camp does not know all this. That's what verse 18 to 20 says. David recovered everything the Malachites had taken, including his two wives. Is there anybody to recover today? Hallelujah. Nothing was missing. Nothing will be missing when you go home today. Nothing, nothing. Young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else, they are taken. David brought everything back so whatever the enemy has taken to its camp everything will be returned to your camp tonight in the name of jesus verse 20 says he took all the flocks and herds and his men drove them ahead of the other livestock saying this is David's plunder hallelujah this is your plunder amen nothing was missing there all the plunder everything else that has been taken captive David brought it back everything the, today the spirit of the Lord is taking to you I mean talking to you and telling you and me the same evening go and get your stuff back yeah. hallelujah so I'm going to get my son now hallelujah yeah. hallelujah yeah. Yeah. some of you have to go and get your marriages today some of you going to get your marriages and put it back into its original order today some of you are going to get back your joy tonight some of you are going to get back your job tonight. Some of you are going to get back your businesses in order tonight. Some of you are going to get back your health in order tonight. Some of you are going to get back your spiritual status tonight back. The way God ordained. Some of us may be saying, Lord, I've lost my faith. I started to doubt, Lord. Some God is returning back that faith to you tonight. God is returning back that faith to you tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into various kinds of trials and temptations. Your perseverance, when you are persevering to take back all, you will get into no lacking zone. Go home and read James chapter 1. It will tell you that when you count it all joy and God is going to put you and me into no lacking zone. Amen. The attack that has come upon you is not to destroy you. It will put you into I lack no zone. I lack nothing zone. Amen. It will put you to I lack nothing zone. 
Let us right now put ourselves in that atmosphere of lack nothing zone in his presence today. Amen. Everything great or small, we will recover it all today. Go after, overtake, recover it all today. Amen. So often we receive prayer requests from somebody who are undergoing uh, some surgery. And then that person will say, can you pray for so and so, such and such and all those stuff. Uh, amen. What we do, we immediately start to pray alone or we call somebody and pray together with for that surgery to take place in that place and then some of us find out which hospital it is and if it is in UAE then we go and visit that person and also pray then after some time of praying what we do we ask how is that person doing now then we get an answer everything went well the surgery went off well now that person is in the recovery room a man said today tonight I see many of us in that recovery room Amen. In that recovery room, what they do? They give you a lot of things uh, to regain your strength. Uh, they give a lot of things uh, that you come back to your normal sea. They give a lot of things uh, that everything that you have lost uh, is regained uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So this is what is happening to you and me today. Amen. Hallelujah. You went through a lot of surgeries. You went through a lot of attacks. Uh, you went through encouraging yourself in the Lord. You went through inquiring of the Lord. You went through all those processes now. And now you are in the recovering state. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As the choir gets ready to give a beautiful song today, let me tell you what happens uh, next uh, in our uh, scripture. Amen. Let's see what happens to those 200 men who are tired and did not go to the battle with other 400. Amen. Praise the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 30 verses 21 to 25 I'm going to read. Then David came to the 200 men who had been too exhausted to follow him and who were left, left behind at the Besor Valley. They came out to meet David and the men with him. As David and his men approached, he asked them how they were doing. Amen. And verse 22 says, But all the evil men and troublemakers among David followers said, Who said? All the evil and troublemakers, not the man after God's own heart say like this, uh, not the worshippers say like this, uh, not the people who have co close communion with the Lord say this, uh, the only people are saying evil man and troublemakers among David followers say is uh, because they did not go out with us, uh, we will not share with them the plunder we recovered. However, each man may take his wife and children and go. Here, what I see is, it is not only the children, wife, and all those stuff in this verse. First verse says, we will not give them the plunder that we have brought. Let them take their wives and children, that only. Which means there is double portion of anointing in this place. There is double portion of blessings that David has brought from that place of the enemy's camp. This is saying that share, do not share with them the plunder that we recovered. Just give them their wives and children. Today God is giving you these plunders. Not only you are getting, that is why the song says, He will restore it all. Not only this, even more than this, He will restore it all to you today. Amen. Which means they brought double anointing, double portion. Amen. They all recovered whatever extras God has in store for them that day. Then verse 23 says, David replied, No brothers, you must not do that. What the Lord has given us. He has protected us, delivered into our hands the raiding party that came against us. Who will listen to what you say? The share of the man who stayed with the supplies is the same as that of him who went down to the battle. All of us will share alike. I mean, there is no selfishness. If somebody is tired, let them be tired. But when you bring back your plunder, what God has given you, do not forget to share the blessings with the people who are tired, who left behind. I mean, those 200 people, they were tired. Nevertheless, David says, let us all share alike. Do you and me have the heart like this? It's a question. Amen. I have to develop a heart like this to share with a person who did not work hard with me. 
Amen. This is the lesson I am learning here. Then David made this uh, a statute and ordinance uh, for Israel for that day to this day. Amen. This is the word. Jesus also teaches us to love your neighbor as yourselves. Amen. Can we all stand? This new song is going to minister to your soul. Receive it. This song is specially chosen for you. Take this song directly as the Holy Spirit is giving you today. Amen. The song says like this. Who was lost in battle? What was taken lawfully? Where Satan has planted his seed? And where health is ailing? And where strength is failing? God says, I will restore to you all of this and much more than this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What was lost in battle? What was taken unlawfully? Where the enemy has planted his sweet. Where your hell is sailing, where your strength is failing, I will restore to you all of this and more. This is not Aggie I will restore this is the Holy Spirit to you talking to you and me this evening. All of this and more. What was lost in battle? What was lost in battle? What was taken unlawfully? Where the enemy has planted his weed, and where your hell is ailing, where your strength is failing. Restore to you all of this and more. I will restore to you all of this and more. I will restore. I will. I will restore. And the song goes by. Oh, if anyone needs prayer, you can come forward. We have just five minutes. Quickly All desire. This and more. When your heart is breaking, where your dreams are forsaken. When it seems what was promised will not be given to you And where your peace is confusion And reality an illusion I will restore to you all of this and more I will Restore to you all of this and more. Let's sing it together. I will restore. I will restore. Oh, I will restore to you all of this and more. Oh, I will restore. breaking where your dreams are forsaken when it seems what promised will not be given to you and where 
your peace is confusion and reality and illusion I will restore to you all of this and more I will restore to you all of this and more God says I will restore I will and more oh, I will restore I will I will restore I will restore to you all of this and much more I will restore to you all of this and more I will restore I will restore oh, I will restore to you all of this and more oh, I will restore What was lost in battle? What was lost in battle? What was taken unlawfully? Where the enemy has planted his seed And where your health is sailing Where your strength is failing I will restore to you all of this and more I will restore to you all of this and more God says I will restore I will restore to you all of this and more oh I will restore I will I will restore oh, I will restore to you all of this and more I will restore restorer pursue overtake and restore Lord God Almighty we will take that word for tonight the Sabbath night and as we celebrate the Sabbath rest I pray that Lord we will rest in you believing that you are a God of restoration that you are a God who restores everything that is been stolen that has been looted oh Lord we know that we will pursue we will not let the enemy steal anymore we will not let the enemy steal our health anymore we will not let the enemy destroy our camp anymore we will not let the devil snatch away our finances anymore but father we will pursue and destroy the enemy and destroy the party of Satan in the name of Jesus and Father, we'll see the glory of God restored back to your church. We will see the restoration process to be fulfilled and to be accomplished in the name of Jesus. 
And Father, I pray the Lord, everything that has been stolen will be restored back to your people in double measure. In the name of Jesus, in double measure. You're a God of double measure. You're a God of sevenfold blessing. In the name of Jesus, O oh God. Lord, as your servant, O oh God, I declare it. I decree it, O oh God, a sevenfold blessing. A sevenfold restoration to take place in 2017. In the name of Jesus, O oh God. Sevenfold restoration. Sevenfold restoration. Take over your church in the name of Jesus. Sevenfold restoration. Everything that the canker worm and the palmer worm has stolen and eaten, you will restore it back in a double measure. Oh Lord, seven times over, Satan will have to give it back. In the name of Jesus, we command it in Jesus' name. We command you, Satan, return back everything that you have stolen in the name of Jesus Christ of now. There is victory in the blood of the Lamb. There is power in the name of Jesus. Every job restored back. Every finance restored back. Every marriage restored back. Every family restored back. Every property restored back. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you are a God of restoration. We thank you. We bless you. We thank you for your handmaiden, O God. As she has shared your word, O God, what you laid in her heart. O Father, and I thank you, O God. Lord, as she's called for a son, son will belong to you. Restore him back, O God, into that rightful place to be the son of God, the son of Yeshua, the Messiah, in the name of Jesus, that he will write songs and dance for the glory of Yeshua in the name of Jesus. This is a year of Jubilee. As we enter into the year of Jubilee, O oh God, there will be total restoration. In the name of Jesus, every captive will be set free. Everyone will return to his own possession in the name of Jesus. Because that's what your word says. And we want to say thank you. Lord, tonight we receive your word in faith in our hearts that we will encourage ourselves in the Lord. We will pursue our enemy. Destroy, O oh God. We will be good to our neighbors. We will share of our blessings. O oh Lord God Almighty, and you will be alone exalted. Father, we thank you for the teaching. We thank you for the word. We thank you. The words that you speak to us, they are spirit and they are life. We receive your spirit and we receive the life of your word into our spirits, into our hearts, into our minds, into our bodies, that we will not be the same. We will be changed. Bless your handmaiden, our God, that she will see the enemy that she has seen. She will see that enemy again no more. In the name of Jesus, she will see that enemy again no more. She will have a perfect health, perfect wealth, perfect job, perfect finances, perfect environment, all for the glory of your name. Amen. And let Jesus be alone glorious. Yes. Your church, oh God, belongs to you. Amen. You will perfect everything yes, that concerneth your church. Yes, Honor them, bless them, reward them. Be with them, oh God. The Sabbath, the blessings of Sabbath will be their portion. That you will, Lord, feed them with the heritage of Jacob. And you will cause them to ride on the high places of the earth. That is the promise of the blessings of Sabbath. And I release those blessings upon your church in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We give you the glory and we give you the praise. In Jesus' most holy, mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of his sweet Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. And all the saints of God said, Amen, Amen. Give the Lord a big clap offering. God bless you. God be with you.
Hallelujah. Receive the word, be blessed. And if anyone who wants the word, they can get a copy. It will be up on the YouTube very shortly. And they can have a copy free of charge and circulate it. They'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you and good night.